Hello and welcome to another exciting Max MSP tutorial. I'm Andrew Robinson and in this video I am going to demystify the JIT.matrix object for you. If you do visual work in Max MSP, this is going to be your tool for everything when, really when it comes down to it because all the visual elements are matrices underneath. But if you've never touched it before, it's kind of complicated and confusing to wrap your head around so I'm going to take all the mystery out of it in a very basic and easy to understand way. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First off, right now what we have going on is we have this jit.grab object which opens up the webcam and I'm running it into a jit.matrix object that's got some stuff in it. It says 4 char 1280 720. What is going on exactly? Well, we're reading our webcam data into this matrix and the webcam itself is already a matrix. There are four planes to what you're seeing in the webcam. There's an alpha channel, an R, a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And those four planes together make up the image that you see in all its color in detail. And that exactly is what this four in our JIT.matrix is representing. You can define the number of planes in your matrix with this number. And four has the alpha, red, green, blue channel in them. So it's very common that you will see a four plane matrix. Um, the next little thing in the JIT.matrix object is char. That is the type of matrix that it is. And uh, you'll use different types of matrices for different purposes. The only two I ever have really used are the char type and the float 32 type. Now, if you're doing stuff with the webcam or like video or whatever, and uh, it's all video based, you're going to use char more likely than not. If you are using a matrix to do 3D modeling and that kind of stuff, that's more of a reason for you to use a, thir a float 32 type. Um, don't worry too much about that for the basics. Um, just know that generally at this level, you're going to be doing stuff with char. Now, the next part is probably the most important part, and that is these two numbers, the 1280, 720, and that defines your dimension size for your matrix. The webcam that I am using is 1280 by 720, so by having that in my JIT.matrix, it allows the webcam data to pass through at full resolution. But this is the beauty of the matrix because you can use it as a resize tool. So right now we are seeing the full HD image, but if I just cut this down to 480 by 320, you'll see it is still a nice full image, like nothing really that much has changed, but it did lose some detail. It got pixelated. We went from a high def matrix dimension to a standard definition matrix. It still looks okay, it's just not as many pixels. And we can change this to be even smaller. I can say 2020, and now we have a very pixelated matrix uh, where there are only 20 pixels by 20 pixels in it, and that is all that we're seeing. And um, this is cool. This is like this low res image is a fun visual effect and you can use it both for its aesthetic purposes and its practical purposes. Um, if you need to resize files, you can use the JIT.matrix object to do that. I don't know if you've ever been on a website and they're like, we need an image that's exactly 80 pixels by 80 pixels for like whatever reason they would need an 80 by 80 image. Um, you can then use the JIT.matrix to resize those images straight in Max. You don't have to go online and use some online tool. You can just build it yourself. And I do that all the time. And just like we're doing with this webcam to get it to be all pixelated, you can do the same thing with images. So if you just create a blank JIT.matrix and don't give it any information, you can then use the message import movie, which lets you import movies or pictures. Either one is fine and then do comma bang uh, just so that a bang then gets sent to the matrix after. We can then take a copy of our JIT matrix for char 20 by 20 and take a copy of our JIT.p window object and then just click this message and I'm gonna load in this picture of my friend here and you can see that it did the exact same thing that it's doing with the webcam. It uh, imported the image into this empty blank default matrix and gave it the um, it gave it the 
dimension size and everything that the image is at default and then by running it through this patch cord into this jit dot matrix object we've resized it down to a 20 by 20 matrix as well now say you really like this image and you want to take a picture of it you can do that with the jit dot matrix object just in the same way we said import movie we can say export um, but we want to do an export image and you see as I start to type the word export there is an export movie and image option uh, because this is just a picture we're going to use the image they're separate for exporting but again import movie does both image is and movies um, and then we can just say attach that in there to our jit dot matrix and click export image and give it a file name I'm gonna say fun and save it and if we do that and it's saved and then we go to our desktop we can see, look, oh, we have our fun image saved, but oh my God, it is so tiny. That's because it's a 20 by 20 pixel image. Um, what if you want that low res look without it being that small, actually? Well, you gotta downscale it like we're doing here to get this low res image, but then if you wanna save it, you just gotta upscale it back up, which is totally easy to do. You just copy the matrix again, and then you change the dimension size to the dimensions you want. So if you want a full high def image of this 20 by 20 matrix, you can just change the dimension size of the JIT dot movie or JIT dot matrix object to 1280 by 720 so that we get the full HD image. And then we just gotta send a bang through the original matrix so it just runs the image through these patch cords again and then into this one because it wasn't there and now by sending that bang it is there so now when we click the export image message uh, we'll save it and we'll save I don't know I'm just giving it a random name um, and now when we see it here it is there is the full 20 by 20 image but at the HD scale because we we down sampled it to 20 by 20 and then we sampled it back up to be the actual image size that we wanted. So you can resize images and movies and videos all day long with this super useful tool uh, for that reason. But there's a lot of other cool features still with the JIT dot matrix that we haven't even gotten to talk about yet. So I'm going to delete this for now and I'm going to show you another cool feature. With the JIT dot matrix objects, you can start to do visual feedback loops as well. Um, all you got to do is give it a name. If we give this matrix a name like feed, uh, now whatever is sent into this matrix, any other JIT dot matrix object with the exact same name will also receive that data. So we can just make a copy over here. And because this is called feed and this is called feed, everything that's getting passed through this patch cord into this object is also getting sent into this object without needing a patch cord. And if we just attach a bang to this object and press it, we get that frame at that moment from this feed. So that's cool. So you can see that it's also kind of like, it's like a send and receive object, um, but with visual information if you have the same name. Now we could do some really other cool things with this feedback loop effect as well. If we detach this patch cord for a sec, and I'll explain why in just a second, if we detach that for a sec, and we put this JIT dot matrix that has the feed and this image still saved in it here, and we add an object like JIT dot rota in the middle, and we define the anchor points to be the middle of our image, which since it is a 20 by 20 image, our, if we want the middle point, we need to do half of our dimension size. So it's going to be anchor X10, anchor Y10. And then we're going to say, uh, let's rotate it a little bit with theta and do bound mode 2 so that it doesn't rotate out of screen and never come back. And if we just patch this into here like this, our image that we have saved, this guy right here, is going to get sent out of this patch cord get slightly rotated by this and then get sent into this matrix. And because it has the same name, you guessed it, it's going to be sent back up to here. So we can get this feedback loop going. All it needs now is a bang. So I'm gonna pull this Metro toggle here and here. And now we see it's doing exactly that. It is rotating our visual matrix uh, slightly and then sending that like ro slightly rotated version back into this matrix, which is then getting passed through this loop again over and over and over 
and creating this weird looking visual effect that you see below. So why did I delete the jit.grab patch core to do that? Um, that's a great question you might have right now. Um, it's because if we are sending new jitter data, a new visual data into this matrix while trying to do this feedback loop, this patch cord is gonna overwrite it. And you'll see now we have uh, the original webcam data again, but that slightly rotated version is also in here a little bit. That's what this blue bar uh, is now at the top. Um, so it's just overriding the data, which is why that feedback loop stopped working. So you can't send new JIT frames into the JIT dot matrix using this feedback loop. There is a, uh, a feedback loop method that I'll explain in a future tutorial video uh, where you can mix in live frames with the feedback loop effect. But for now, uh, just know, don't send in any new matrix information in this uh, feedback loop effect totally works. Um, and is very valuable. You could do so many cool things with this uh, really simply. Um, so with that in mind, there's one last thing I want to show. And that is how you can use the jit.matrix object to modify certain aspects of your patch in real time within Max. I've shown a lot of cool, like useful tools that you know you should know, but uh, if you wanna build a patch that is you know real time this could be another very valuable lesson for uh using the jit dot matrix so i just changed it back to 1280 by 720 so we're back at this full hd uh image again but if we don't want to change these values if we don't want to hard code any new information in it if we want that change to happen in real time based on some interaction we can use messages to the jit dot matrix object to modify its parameters as well. And if we wanna change the dimension size, the message for that is dim. Um, and we can just say dollar sign one for this first 1280 value and dollar sign two to be a variable for our second value. And we just patch that right into that object. And because this has two variables, we need to send it a list of two numbers, one for each variable. And to do that, we can use the pack object, and I'm gonna say pack ii, because uh, the dimension values that we're gonna use are integer values. Um, we're gonna get those integer values from a random object. And for our x-axis, I'm gonna say, let's do 640, which is half of this high def image. Um, that seems like a good range of numbers to me. And I'm gonna do half for our y value as well. And I'm just gonna patch that into here and into here so that these random numbers create our two number list to change our dimension size. And all that's left to do is send a bang to these random objects. So I'm gonna use the Metro to do that. And now we're getting this crazy uh, glitch effect from changing the dimension size of our matrix in real time. And uh, that's a little fast for me. So I'm gonna actually create a new Metro and say 100. Uh, so it sends out a bang every 100 milliseconds. And this is too slow. Let's say 60, I don't know. Um, yeah, there you go. That looks a little bit better, more like it's just glitching out. Uh, and that's a pretty cool effect right there. And you could use this on an image, on a video. There's a lot of different things you can do. We could somehow bring the matrix feedback loop back into this, I'm sure. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it with the JIT dot matrix object in terms of this basic tutorial. So just to recap real quick, things to remember, this number is your planes for your alpha, your red, your green and blue channel. And you need to have those planes in there to get the full image in uh, all color and glory in detail. Uh, this number, this word is your type of matrix. If you're doing visual effects like we're doing right here where we use that like JIT dot rota object, um, or other types of objects like jit.percosa to change the brightness or the saturation or the contrast. Char is gonna be the type of matrix that you want. The other type that is commonly used is float32, but that's for 3D modeling stuff. Then we'll talk about that some other time, I'm sure. And then the last two numbers are your dimension sizes, which we are currently changing right now from a full HD down to a random size uh, of half that length to get this cool glitch effect and you can resize images and videos all day long in Max MSP using the JIT.matrix object. So I hope that video was really helpful 
and I hope it kind of clears some things up about how the JIT dot matrix object works. If there's anything I missed, please, 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 please leave me a comment in the uh, comment section down below. I want stuff to be clear to you. I want to do a good job explaining things. So uh, if there's anything that you want to know more, I will be very happy to explain in greater detail. Um, so yeah, please leave me comments. Please like and subscribe if you find these tutorials helpful. Uh, it lets me know that you find these tutorial helpful and that I'm doing a good job making them. So that's always like really helpful to me uh, if you do that and I appreciate it. Uh, I recently made a Patreon. You can go uh, subscribe to that for more lessons and more uh, patches. If you wanna play with some of the patches I have built, please do that there, uh, link down below. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.